In a previous video, we talked about having three large axes that you use to move the camera in X, Y, and Z, and three small axes that you use to use to move the target in X, Y, and Z. But what we've done now is we've taken our robot and we've added it to a track. This track allows us enormous extra capability in terms of shooting and is a very valuable asset to add to our machine. But it brings with it the problem of you now have a fourth axis that creates large movement of the camera. So you need to overcome this problem and you need a software solution to be able to decide which of those target tracking axes are not going to be used and which of them are. We overcome this problem by designating a master axis. A master axis is an axis that can be a target tracking axis or can be an independent axis that nonetheless moves the camera around in space. The master axis will determine where the camera is and the target tracking axis will determine the path. In order to best use a machine like this where we now have four possible target tracking axes to move the camera, selecting the track to be a master axis or the arm axis here to be a master axis needs to be a switch in flare so with some shots we are using the arm as a master and the track is moved as part of the movement due to the target tracking calculations or we should be able to switch it so that the track is a master and can put the robot in place and the arm allows the movement of the camera in order to do the target tracking movement. It doesn't matter if our master axis can also, as an independent axis, do large movements or small movements in order to best place the whole machine in order to do accurate target tracking. The object of the exercise is to be able to increase the envelope of the camera in space. So this option of creating a master axis allows us to do that. This aspect of having extra axes, one of which is a master and the other three of which are target tracking axes, allows us to move the machine in different ways and to prepare different types of shot. Here, I have my outer arm set as a master axis. This is this axis here. If I now go into Cartesian view and do the go to, <coughs> I have my arm stays black because it is a master axis. My track is actually X axis with regard to the camera. So if I move my track like this, my machine moves back and I can do a long pull out as part of my programming. And make long, comparatively slow moves because I'm moving the whole machine in order to have that type of job. But then, if I am in Cartesian view and I move the master axis itself, because I am not asking the camera to move, the machine moves its position and keeps the camera stationary. This is useful for lining up and making fast or slow 
or complex moves better able to be smoothly run. As an alternative, if I now go to my kinematics file and change to master track, now my track is a master axis and my arm is a target tracking axis. So now if I go into Cartesian view, I have track stays black. My arm is my X. And this movement is what I get when I move my camera in X, which is different from the movement I was getting with the track running. Again, if I move my master axis, the camera stays in the same place. If we look at the axis setup for each of these axes, here the track is a master type. The arm is a target tracking type. And that is what is changing when we switch from master track to master arm. This has been a Mark Roberts motion control training video. Thank you for watching.